Well, welcome to my video on mapping notation. Mapping notation um, describes uh, domain and range in a special way and, uh, and actually calls attention to it. And you can, uh, it allows for the description of domain and range as sets. Um, in fact, they should always be expressed as sets. Whereas domain, uh, the domain of a function, uh, all x values that make sense as input values of a function uh, do belong to its domain and the function's range would be all the y values that the function can return. So that's um, you know and you can also be conscious about input and output so the input values that make sense belong to the function's domain whereas whatever numbers the function can produce uh, can be referred to as its output or the range. Now you can also remember that uh, y is the dependent variable, x is the independent variable, and y is the variable that the function takes the place of. So uh, functions of x, for example, uh, we can just say that y uh, is now f of x, and uh, the y values sorry, the x values, when you plug them in, lead to a mapping onto certain y values um, in its range. Now the way we denote mapping notation of a function, uh, this is how we do it. F of x or f at x is f with uh, an x inside two brackets. That's the function notation. But when you see an f with a colon and an x followed by an arrow, and after the arrow is a formula uh, representing the function, that's function notation. So I kind of mix the two in this diagram just to say that x is mapped onto whatever function goes in place of f at x. And so, for example, uh, we can describe f at x being uh, x values mapped onto 3x plus 2, which would be the formula which would produce y values. And of course, x are the, num the possible numbers that can go into 3x plus 2, and the range uh, represent the diversity of values that 3x plus 2 can produce, given any x. If we want to use set notation uh, to describe domain, well, we should always use set notation. Uh, x uh, such that x belongs to the set of real numbers. We can say the same about y. y such that y belongs to the set of reals. And of course this is true because 3x plus 2 is a line and any x can go in really and uh, any x can be produced. Now relations uh, are a more generalized term. They can include functions but sometimes uh, they're not functions because they fail the vertical line test. So a relation can be nothing more than the rule x greater than y, where x and y can be any integer, let's say, just to make things kind of intuitive. So if I let x equal 9 and y equals 1, well, 9 is greater than 1, so that's okay. Or how about if x is, say, negative 1? And we let y to be 3. Well, that's not okay because negative 1 is not greater than 3. The formula for this function is really considered to be a rule which allows us to decide on which ordered pairs are true or not. In other words, which ordered pairs make this satisfy the function and which don't satisfy the function. So, you know, the rule 9 greater than 1 is true. Negative 1 greater than 3 is simply false and does not satisfy the relation. So, um, one thing is, I mean, if we wanted to list all possible points, we could, but of course that takes too long. It'll take forever, actually, because there's infinitely many of them. 
Or we could use uh, set builder notation and build ourselves a set. We can call that set set A. And we can uh, define that as all ordered pairs x, y such that x, y are integers and x is greater than y. And that really, def in fact, that goes one step further. That defines that whole relation we were trying for. So the domain would be all first components of an ordered pair. And the range would be all second components of an ordered pair using these rules. And of course, to define domain and range that way means we don't need a rule uh, for ordered pairs, right? We don't need really any rule or any formula. Uh, we can simply make up any two numbers and the first number <laughs> in that pair will be the domain and the second number will be the range. So we can make a so-called function that is nothing more than a random collection of ordered pairs, meaning there's no rule at all throwing these together. I could build a set f with these points, and here f of 1 is negative 2, f of 2 is 7, f of 4 is minus 5, and so on. There was no intent to make a rule for generating y values from x like you would using a formula. So most of the time, relations use a rule in the form of an expression or an equation to generate values for x and y. So that's, that's what happens most of the time. Usually you're not just making up numbers. It's usually a formula, such as 3x plus 2y equals 6, which is for a line, or this one for a circle, x squared plus y squared is 25, or this one for a square root function, 3x, square root of 3x plus 1. These, uh, the first... Um, the first and last um, equations that you see there are both functions, um, but the relation in the middle, x squared plus y squared equals 25, is not a function. And that's because for every y, uh, or sorry, for every x, you can get two y values, which is not, not what a function is allowed to do. But suppose we define a set A, which is only allowed to be the integers from 1 to 100. And maybe a set such that, you know, uh, x belongs to A and uh, y is a number belonging to A. Now, what about, um, what about defining a rule? So, like, how about y equals simply the square root of x? Uh, if we use that rule to generate uh, values, now remember, we're only allowed to take numbers from set A and we're only allowed to produce numbers that go back into set A, There's, that reduces seriously the number of ordered pairs that are possible. Um, so it's a good question what ordered pairs are possible. So uh, ordered pairs, we can start with 1, 1. Of course, uh, this, remember, is the square root of x. So the square root of 4 is 2. So 4, 2 is a good point. 9, 3. Uh, 16, 4 is a good point as well. That's, you know, x equals 16, y equals 4. Uh, 25, 5, 36, 6, 49, 7, 80, uh, sorry, 64, 8, um, 80, 81, 9, and 110. Uh, these, are all, these are all good ordered pairs that come from set A. We'll call this set of ordered pairs set S maybe our solution set. And um, the domain of this function are literally the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, well, not really, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, uh, 80, 64, 81, and 100, which we could list out. But rather than do that, I'll just, uh, I'll just use a formula. So x can equal, say, n squared, but we still have to define n squared. So we'll say that n equals the numbers 1 through 10 all squared. Or n is just, we don't even have to say that, it's just the numbers 1 to 10. As for the range, this is what the function produces. So for the range, it'll be uh, all y values such that y is simply the numbers from 1 to 10, uh, where y belongs to the set of integers once more. So um, using a mapping diagram, we could list out 
the 10 values of x that we were allowed to produce or allowed to use uh, and call that um, the domain. I'll just label it x, but it's, it's, all, it's also the domain of the function. And the numbers from 1 through 10 will be the possible y values. Notice this mapping is rather peculiar. When we finish doing this, all the lines will go straight across. They all map directly to each other, and uh, no x value yields two y's, and no y value is produced from more than one x. We call that a one-to-one -one mapping. So functions map one to one if for every y value in the range there exists one x value in the domain from which y was mapped. On a graph of a continuous function, you can use a horizontal line test to show that a function is one to one. In fact, uh, don't confuse that with the vertical line test. Remember, the vertical line test is used to distinguish a function from a relation. And uh, this now we have this horizontal line test which actually tells you whether the function is one-to-one, -one, which is rather important in later lessons when we start taking, when we start discussing inverses of functions. So for the function f of x equals three times the square root of two times quantity x plus two uh, plus one, as we see in the as we see in the image. Um, its parent function is simply the square root of x, which we've already seen. Now, I've labeled a equals to 3, k equals to 2, d equals to 2, and c equals to 1. a and c actually end up being operations on y. And uh, k and d end up being operations on x. a equals 3 stretches the function vertically, tripling the y value. c equals 1 shifts the function up vertically, adding 1 to the y value. And so we can say y is mapped into 3y plus 1. But x, uh, for the operations on x, k equals 2 compresses, it seems to do the opposite, and d shifts the function horizontally opposite the sign that happens to be in front of it. And so uh, we can say that actually in x, it's going to be x divided by 2 minus 1 that is going to generate the x values. So let's, uh, let's do that. Remember our formula. And now let's generate, let's devise a formula from that that can generate our x values. We're multiplying by 2, so we have to divide x by 2. We're adding 2 to x, so that means we have to subtract 2 from x when we're mapping. As for y, it's straightforward. We're multiplying by 3, so we multiply y by 3. We're adding 1 to y, so we just add 1. So we're looking at x. I look at 1, I divide it by 2, and I subtract 2, I get negative 3 halves. Similarly, a 4 divided by 2 leads to 2 minus 2, which gives me 0, and so on. So all of those under the x column are generated from the formula x divided by 2 minus 2. As for the y values, I take the y, like y equals 1, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4, which I have in green. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So 2 taken from the y column produces a 7 underneath the new y column. And the similar, similar thing is done to make 10 and 13. I'm just reminding here that operations on x are opposite and operations on y are similar as we saw in the previous slide. Now uh, we're just going to check our answers. We're going to see if our answers pass a sanity check. I am plotting the points I generated from my mapped function and then on top of that I'm going to generate the formula that we were asked about in the question. So I'm just going to drag that down and now I'm just going to bring up a graph uh, tool which will actually help me um, plot the formula uh, and show you that it passes through every one of those points. So those points are correct points. Thank you for watching.